Uh, thank you so much for coming, uh, Joe. Yeah. yeah. How many kids do you have? Five. Five. And you were just talking about our oldest. He's 25. Mm -hmm. Missionary to China. Mm. As soon as that can happen, he's a musician, making albums and videos and things. And amazing kid. They're all great. I have yeah. a 23-year-old over at IHOP, not far from here, uh -huh. doing an internship, a one-thing one internship. And then I have three girls that live with us back in Southern California, Rachel, Kate, and Jane, and they're 21, 18, and 16 is where they are right now. And we just love being a family. We love doing things together. We've often led worship together in churches, and we run a house of prayer out of our home wow. as well. So we're just, we love the Lord, and we do everything we can with Him and uh, for Him that He lets us do. Wow. So, uh, you know, right now, many Christian families, they have the same struggling, you know, their kids, they grew up in the church, they mm -hmm. go to Sunday school, and they, they were very uh, cute and godly kids, but once they went to college, or they started to work, you know, go to society, left to their home, mm -hmm. and they started to, like, stop going to the church, or they just, you know, stop really uh, following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Would you explain a little bit of this and how could you um, you know, help those parents? I've seen it happen a lot, of course everybody has, and it's, mm. it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, but if you question the assumptions that got you there, you'll mm -hmm. find the answer is rather easy. If you raise a child in church, but it, your main goal is actually for that child to go get a good education, Mm -hmm. and then a good job and to live a good life, you're going to ruin that child. Mm -hmm. You're not helping that child yeah. because you haven't put passion for God, passion, love for Jesus in the heart of that child as the first thing. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of, I think, I'll speak to fathers, you know, we're created by our father to resonate with the heart of our father, mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. In the same way, he, puts it, he gives the responsibility to a father of a household to create the atmosphere of the kingdom in the household. How do you do that? The main thing is to simply be overwhelmed and in love with our Father God. Then the peace of God reigns in our household and the love. It guides us. Mm. It teaches us in every moment how to address a child, how to love them, how to correct them. All those things flow from the Father. So none of us is any smarter than the other when it comes to parenting. Mm -hmm. It's just about being in tune with what the Father says at all times, as best you can. You create an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So the heart of a family will resonate with the heart of the dad and whatever he's resonating with. Mm -hmm. So if the father of a family is resonating meaning he thinks about and is pursuing primarily career, stability, a good reputation in the community, maybe leadership in a church, that's okay, that gets worked in. But if there's a bunch of things that he's pursuing, guess what the kids are going to follow and do? They're gonna say, the most important thing for me is to make my parents proud by going to a good university, getting good grades, then a good job, then they can brag on me. We all wanna brag on our kids, right? But it's, we determine what they, they think is important. So I don't know why it surprises Christian families when they go to church and they do all these things, but primarily their heart is on those things that I keep mentioning. Mm -hmm. Why does it surprise us that the kid goes to college, doesn't have that strong atmosphere of God within him or her, isn't used to resonating with the heart of the Father day by moment by moment, why does it surprise us that the <gasps> sensational tactics of the enemy capture their attention? Whoa. Mm. And it, itching ears. Wow, that sounds like, oh, wow, now I'm questioning what I thought. Everybody else says that's the truth. Mm. I was taught that's the truth. But everyone, and they're all happy. I want to belong. And they're gone. Mm. And then they have to come back to it on their own. It doesn't need to happen that way. There's almost an assumption that kids need to have a period of rebellion. I do not find that to be true. If they're resonating with the Father, they know the good stuff. Mm. So I think a lot of Christian families believe they're raising children in, in uh, 
in the atmosphere of God or in as Christians, but they're really just raising them as churchgoers. Yeah. And not to be harsh about it, and you know, we've had to correct our, our course at, at different times too, by seeing the example of someone else or accepting a rebuke where people say, you need to begin praying and worshiping with your family or something like that. And we took that advice and God has used it. And when you do that, he enlarges and empowers the atmosphere of the kingdom in your house. And then your family becomes what it was destined and meant to be. Mm. Kids who love Jesus. Why? Because they see mom and dad love Jesus. Mm. They see that I love Jesus and I'm talking to them even when nobody's around. Mm. You know, I'm consistent. Mm. So it's not just the words of my mouth, but they see a burning heart. There's nothing more attractive mm. than someone who's in love with Jesus. The two things that kids want most is to know that their parents love each other Mm. And they want to know that their parents, particularly their father, loves God. Because then they feel in right alignment with the world. Mm. They say, I'm safe because my dad listens to God. Mm. I'm covered. I'm this feels good. I feel the peace. He's the Prince of Peace. I feel that. I, oh, I feel so loved and appreciated mm. for who I am. It's mm. all flowing down through my dad. I trust, I trust my dad. And that's what kids want. They want to know that their dad loves the Lord and is humbly submitted to God. Then your kids will submit their views and their opinions to you. Mm. See, mm. we humble ourselves before the Lord and the Lord exalts us in our own family. And the kids go, I want to be like that. Mm. Even kids who have a dad who didn't do so well, mm. they're always trying to find the aspect of their father that's praiseworthy. Oh, he provided. Well, he was good. He, they're always looking for how did my dad reflect God? Mm. God's provider. God is this and that. Mm. He didn't leave my mom. God's faithful. Mm. So underlying all of that is mm. people know w what God is like and they want to mm. see that reflected in their mom and dad. Mm. And, and the more that you align to that, all oh, the fruit of it is so delicious. Mm. You know, your kids begin to express themselves spiritually and their love for God. And then they begin to question. They say, why would I go to that university? We had a, a daughter who got a rather large scholarship offer from a Christian university. She went and visited it and was not impressed at the spirituality of the school. She said it was mostly intellectual, mm -hmm. head knowledge. Mm -hmm. She turned down that large scholarship, mm -hmm. four-year scholarship and went instead to a Bible Institute. Mm. And you know what we said? <laughs> you listened to the Lord and you made a great, and he, the, the Lord just says, blessed her life. She's a richer person on the inside. Mm. She'll get a degree at some point, mm. but is that the top thing? If it is, you're really gonna be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Or if money or anything like that. So we yeah. must be careful. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first, right? Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. It's pretty simple. If you, I mean, you have to walk it out. But if mm. you do it, the results are going to be fabulous. Mm. <laughs> well, well. In conclusion, I think uh, the most, the most important, the foundation is really the relationship between yourself and God. That's the most important thing, right? From there, you can be a father, you can be a husband, you can be a provider, yeah, and you can be successful in your career. So everything You can do it. Fun. Every person on earth can do this. Yes. It says humble yourself before mm -hmm. before God. We're going to do that. Yeah. And he will lift us up and exalt us so we can exercise authority rightly and it honors him. He'll praise us. Our children will bless us. Our wives will go, "Oh, they'll brag on us." Everything's going to go better for you and you'll get more money by the way, too. Amen. Usually. <laughs> Reward. <laughs> Reward. <laughs> Here and, there. and also in heaven, not only on earth. <laughs> it, there's no downside to this. <laughs> yes. You know. Amen. So good. You know. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thanks for letting me Coming. talk with you. It's been a yeah. total Hope joy. Hope to see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>